Hello and welcome. This is Jim Carpenter. I have Andy Rose with me today. Andy, how you doing? I'm doing great, Jim. Thank you. Great. Tell me a little bit about yourself, and then we'll jump right into it from a construction perspective, a lot of the legislation that we've got going, and some of your thoughts as to where we need to head. Take it away. Sure. Yeah, my name is Andy Rose. I am a tax principal, primarily focused on the construction and real estate industries. Uh, I co-lead uh, both those industries and spend a significant amount of, of my time in those industries been with the firm for about 25 years and work out of the Lansing office. Okay, great. So Andy, there's a lot going on with the SBA and the loans. How about shedding some light on that, on those topics right now? Yeah, Jim, this is the thing that we, most of us advisors have been talking to clients about all week long. This is what everybody wants to talk about. And it's called the Paycheck Protection Program. And this is an SBA program that has a forgiveness part to it. And that forgiveness part is what has piqued everybody's interest. And applications are actually going in as we speak today. So today was the, uh, the opening day for those to go in. And it's been a developing program. It's been developing all week long. And so I've been on the phone with a lot of SBA lenders. And, uh, you know, it's, it's been changing, uh, you know, each and every day. It's pretty uh, fluid out there. Absolutely. Now, it's extremely fluid. Okay. Now, beyond just the, the Paycheck Protection Program, there's the economic injury. Uh, can you share a little light on that? Sure. Yeah, that's another program that the SBA has rolled out to, uh, to help businesses that are, that are obviously impacted by this uh, pandemic. And it's, it's got some, um, some different terms to it. So not to say that those aren't, uh, those aren't beneficial terms. It just doesn't have that forgiveness part to it that uh, the Paycheck protection program has. Okay. But and it's an option. It's an option that they should be looking at. Okay. And then the traditional 7A loan, how about that? Yep. Tried and, and trued. The 7A loan is still available too and has some very favorable terms. But again, uh, just like the, uh, the economic injury disaster loan, there is no forgiveness to it. But it is, uh, there's, those are three options that everybody should be looking at and considering. And just because you go for the Paycheck Protection Program loan does not mean that you can't also apply for the other ones. Okay. All right. You know, not, uh, not being of the industry then, I'm not familiar with the, the 7A. And what's the difference between that and the economic injury? What, if, I, if I'm just a business person looking at these three options, how do I know which ones I could apply for or not? Yeah, don't don't get too hung up on the seven A. It's um it's just the the section of the uh, the code that this this loan falls under. There's a couple terms that you would uh, you hear out there with with SBA loans are seven A and five O four. It those are just you know fancy terms. Okay, so they're, suffice they're it to all say loans that are that are designed to to help um, smaller businesses with their cash flow needs and um, and are are great. Um, options for them versus considering traditional financing. Gotcha. So it's pro suffice it to say, it's probably safe to say, if you want to apply for these, get with your business advisor and kind of explore the different options. Yeah. I mean, we can help you navigate these and then connect you with, uh, you know, with an SBA lender that, that we work with who we, we, you know, of course have vetted and, and we'll take care of you and, and, and help you with the, uh, the application process. Gotcha. Okay, now you said you've been talking a lot to clients uh, over the last week or so. What what are the big topics you're talking about, and what advice would you uh, give to this audience today? Yeah, I mean the big the big topic right now, Jim, is is cash flow. Uh, a lot of the businesses are unless you're essential, you're you're either partially or totally shut down. And obviously, when you're when you're shut down, the revenue streams are are usually not. Uh, not operating any longer, but yet you've can, you've got to uh, continue to cover your costs. You uh, you may be trying to keep your payroll, um, keep your employees on the payroll. Uh, obviously, utility costs keep coming. You know you've got uh, you've got you know your rent costs, your facility costs. So how do I balance the fact that I you know my revenue stream is either completely stopped or has has you know grossly been uh, um, impacted? with the, the fact that I still have all of these costs that I'm incurring and I, I need to pay these things. So, um, so cash flow right now 
is is king. I mean, it's it's critical to be able to look at you know what you've got in terms of uh, working capital, what your costs are that are coming at you, and how long you can um, essentially keep those costs um, and, and keep paying them without needing some kind of access to capital, um, like the loans we just talked about, possibly. Okay. So I mean, I would say that is. You know, that's the next thing that people want to talk about right after they want to talk about, uh, you know, some of the, the financing that's available through SBA. Okay. Now, uh, switching gears up a little bit, we talked a little bit about the SBA. You just mentioned that. There's been a lot of other legislation like the Family First Coronavirus Response Act. Can you share some uh, information on that as well? Yeah, that's generated a lot of questions. There are, um, there's a couple key components of that, there was um, expanded emergency paid sick leave act, um, which uh, I'll use the acronym EPSLA, uh, which again impacts employers with fewer than 500 employees and uh, the emergency federal or the emergency family and medical leave act, excuse me, uh, which again uh, impacts employers with less than 500 employees. So these are designed to assist with people that uh, with your employees that um, are unable to work because uh, they're home taking care of someone that's sick, someone that has um, contracted COVID-19, uh, one COVID and um, they, need to, they need to be away from work. And yet you, um, you have a requirement as an employer under these acts to continue to pay them uh, for, an ex for a, a certain period of time. So these are these are complex parts of the Family First Coronavirus Act, and they're, these are generating an awful lot of questions, Jim. And um, there are some tax credits that um, that were rolled out as part of this to help employers cover some of those costs. And I would just add too that this also uh, is unique because these are covering self-employed individuals as well. Okay. And uh, then uh, what about the IRS? I know that there's been some information coming out and some of the deadlines have changed. Can you share with us the new deadlines where, when things are due? Yeah, this is, this is big news. This is huge. And this is helping a lot of people. And I can tell you that a lot of businesses and a lot of taxpayers are not focused on filing their tax returns right now. I mean, they're, they're focused on a lot more critical things, uh, keeping their business alive. So the IRS recognized that and a lot of the states have, uh, have agreed to the same uh, line. So uh, what would have been due on April 15th in most cases is now due on July 15th. And so that would cover any tax payments. So if you had a balance due with your 2019 tax return, you've got more time to pay that now as well as if you're someone that makes estimated quarterly payments, your first quarter payment is also not due until July 15th. So what, what's gonna be unique is that, you know, right now you're gonna end up making your second quarter payment before your first quarter payment, which is, I know odd, but that's the, that's the rules right now. Okay, that's what I was gonna ask because they said if we're pushing it back from April to July, what about the June 15th? Right, right. There's some talk out there that that's most likely going to get um, extended to July 15th too. But as of right now, that's uh, those are the rules we have. So um, along those same lines, a lot of a lot of questions have been coming in about does that mean I get more time to make my IRA contribution? And the answer to that would be absolutely. Okay. All right. So so when we start talking about legislation here, we've talked about the SBA loans. We've talked about the Family First. We've talked about extending deadlines. Now there's the Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Act. What, what's that and how's that uh, help our clients? Yeah, the CARES Act is, uh, there is a lot in the CARES Act. In fact, that's what created the uh, Paycheck Protection Program loan. Okay. So uh, there, there are all kinds of provisions in here. This is also what uh, everybody wants to talk about, when do I get my rebate check? So uh, that came out of the CARES Act as well. So that's where uh, you know individuals are going to get twelve hundred dollars. Uh, couples filing joint, it's twenty four hundred dollars, and then there's five hundred for uh, for most children that you claim as a dependent. Uh, so for a family of three, 
filing a joint return. I mean, they're they're looking at uh, $2,900 coming into the family. So, uh, you know, those are not uh, those are not small dollars for a family that's uh, that's struggling and, and, you know, maybe both parents are not working. Right. What? So those those rebates have phase out. So not everyone out there is going to get a check. I believe the phase outs for a single, you are completely phased out at $100,000 a year. And if you're uh, uh, filing a joint return, it phases out at 200000 a year. Okay. Are there additional provisions out there that off the top of your head that we should know about? Yeah, there's some other provisions in this CARE Act. Uh, that are going to help employers. Uh, there's an employee retention credit uh, that can help, uh, which is a um, credit of 50% against your wages up to $10,000. And uh, again, just like all these things, there's there's details uh, that you need to be aware of. So some of these provisions, um, like the employee retention credit, you can't take advantage of it if you go and get yourself a paycheck protection program loan. So it, it excludes you from being able to take the, uh, the employee retention credit. And there's some other, I'd call these um, foot faults. You know, there's these, little, there's these little details in there where you do one thing and it affects you from getting another thing. And so, you know, if you're gonna do any of these things, you really need to be talking to your advisor on this because, you know, again, I mean, if I choose, if I choose one, one uh, program or one provision, it may exclude me from completely choosing another one or, or maybe a, two other options. Okay. So it's a little bit of the left hand and right hand from a legislative perspective stepping on each other. It sure is. I think some of this is basically out there to just make sure that, um, you know, wages aren't getting uh, counted twice for certain credits and, um, and just trying to um, shore up some of the, um, the abuse that might, uh, that might occur with these, which during this period of time, it's, it's hard to, to think that, um, you know, anybody would be abusing these things, but, um, you know, it, it happens. And so there are these, uh, uh, these details that you need to be aware of. Okay. So, so there's a definition of essential versus non-essential. Your thoughts on that? Yeah, I've got an, uh, one other point on the, um, on the CARES Act. So okay. I'd be remiss if I didn't point out the fact that there are some, there are some um, provisions in that that should help businesses with cash flow. So one of the big items in there is the ability to take net operating losses back so for, for instance, if you had a net operating loss for 2019, prior to the CARES Act, you would not have been able to carry that back to previous years to get some tax dollars. The CARES Act is now going to allow that. In fact, you can go back five years. So if you go back five years and you got some years there where you, you know maybe you had some pretty healthy years and you paid some tax, well, this is gonna allow you to go back and get those tax dollars. So there's some ability here to go back with amended returns. And right now we are currently assessing uh, these opportunities for our clients and reaching out to, to let them know that uh, some of these provisions uh, can get them some cash uh, back from previous years and, um, and making sure that they're aware of that. Okay, all right, sounds good. So essential versus non-essential. Yeah, uh, you can't you can't be talking about contractors without talking about this issue. So right now, um, primarily your essential projects are any projects where uh, you know maybe they're working where our contractor clients are working on a wastewater treatment plant, or our road and, and bridge construction contractors, or maybe they're working on a hospital. Those are still essential projects. And so some of our contractor clients are not completely shut down. They are still out there working on those, on those types of jobs. Uh, but what they're running into is that, um, you know, employees that are being called back to work on some of these, uh, these jobs, like, you know, the road construction jobs, uh, the employees are concerned and not wanting to return back to the workforce. So, um, you know, that's an issue that, um, that we're trying to work through with them and, and trying to navigate because there's there's complex rules, you know whether someone has the ability to not return back to the workforce uh, versus the employer being able to mandate them to come back to the workforce. Mm -hmm. 
So our HR solutions group, I've been on the phone with them several times this week and walking business owners through their, uh, you know, their rights and uh, the employees rights. So I would say that, um, you know, that's, that's another big item right now. Okay. So there's a lot of information out there. There's probably a lot of misinformation as well. What sources would you go to, to get good information? Yeah, uh, Raymond actually has a uh, a great website, Jim, with a lot of up to date information on it, and um, and that website is Raymond. dot com backslash covid dash nineteen, uh, as well as the IRS actually has a really really good website as well that um, uh, has some frequently asked questions on a number of these things that I've that I've talked about a number of these provisions, and that's just um, IRS. dot gov backslash coronavirus. Okay, sounds good. So Andy, thank you for your time and energy on this. If anybody has any questions or comments and would like to reach out to you, the best way to get a hold of you is? Andrew.rose, that's R-O-S-E at Raymond.com. And I, in closing, Jim, I'd, I'd say, you know, one of the things too that we didn't talk about, I would strongly encourage our, um, our business clients and uh, if and especially in the in the construction industry, to uh, to make sure you're tracking these uh, these COVID nineteen costs, and that would include setting up uh, separate GL accounts, job numbers. Uh, I just we all believe here at Raymond that uh, you know the more you can segregate these extraordinary costs, it's it's going to be critical in the following months. You know, there's already lawsuits out there against insurance companies that are um, that are saying that this is not an occurrence that's covered. You, you really, really need to be tracking these costs. So, and we can obviously help you with that as well. Okay. Well, Andy, we appreciate your time and energy. We'll look forward to talking to you soon. Great. Thanks, Jim. Take care. Bye.